We're here this morning with Chief, uh, Lawrence Police Chief Roy Vasque, right, and to talk a little bit about the, the new d developments in the Lawrence Police Department. Good morning, Roy. Uh, first of all, I'll we'll congratulate you on becoming a police chief after 25 years with the, with the department. And, uh, and you've been just about everywhere in the department, haven't you? I have, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I've had a, uh, a lot of opportunities inside the police department to kind of grow and and sort of adapt to uh, the position, and I think it's uh, going to suit me well moving forward. Yeah, it, well, yeah, it's, it's one of the busier police departments in the area, right? <laughs> for sure, for sure, over 65,000 so calls for service. You get a lot of service. practice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I have a lot of credit to the men and women of the, of the police department. I mean, it's not an easy job, and the volume of calls for service and, and the, the uh, sometimes extreme amount of calls for service, you know, yeah. the priority type calls for service, uh, certainly keep them busy. Yeah. So how many do you have in the department now? We have 137 right now. We have um, eight more officers in the academy scheduled to come out in the, uh, the end of uh, September. Mm -hmm. So we'll have about, about 145. And we're looking to actually put on four more uh, uh, after that, uh, probably sometime late fall, early 2019, to another academy. So we'll be in pretty good shape. Uh, okay. Better numbers than we've had in, in previous years, right. certainly. Yeah. yeah. How many more would you like to have? Certainly, you know, we'd love to have, you know, 200 police officers in Lawrence, and I think we could use it, quite frankly, uh, based on the, the volume of calls that we have, as you know, really probably three times the amount of calls that surrounding towns have compared to Lawrence. So with, you know, the additional officers, you can do all those things that really the community right. wants, which is community policing, traffic units, and things like that. We can add to the detective division, narcotics, and things like that. I think Lawrence would be in a better place if we could do uh, more of that, but we're, we're certainly much better off than we have been in previous years, yeah. for sure. Good. And uh, yet you sort of reorganized the structure of the department, didn't you? you? Can you describe that a little bit? What? Yeah, certainly when I came in, you know, I had my thoughts moving moving uh, into the position, really. I thought about this for, for years. And uh, so one of the first steps, really, was to come in there and, and take a look at the entire department, see who's doing what. And again, I think my experience in working in all those departments really helped me because I knew who could do what, who was best suited at what, and then from there kind of take a look at really plugging in round pegs and round holes, and that's what I did. So initially right off the bat, I, you know, I moved some people around, reassigned some people into spots that I thought that they could be key players for us in the, in the, in the department, mm -hmm. and then uh, you know, went from there. Yeah, good. So <clears throat> uh, that, you have some brand new, brand new vehicles too, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot, sure. lot different than the checkers. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't around then for those, but I certainly, saw, for the I certainly saw the pictures uh, and I've heard all the stories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was, it, and, and you probably got all new tires, too. Right? <laughs> I remember when, they, when, you know, one of the big problems with the police department, you didn't have any tires on the cars. Oh, yeah. And, uh, no, and no spares. Right. So if a guy got a flat tire, you had to find somebody with a spare. <laughs> we certainly have had those where we've had to call someone else, hey, check your trunk and, and <laughs> yeah. see if you can see if you have a spare that's actually, you know, flated. You know what I mean? It has some air in it. And, uh, you know, and then, you know, have them come over and help them out. So, you know, the, the city and uh, the department itself has had some financial issues over the years. But right now, like I said, the mayor has done a great job of hiring more police officers, the city council backing that sort of initiative with, with the funding. So yeah. Lawrence is certainly in a better spot than it has been in years, for yeah. sure. Good, good. So, <clears throat> so you got new, you got almost all, all your cars are pretty, pretty new, right? You don't have any old. We certainly try to every couple of years, you want to try to rotate your entire fleet. I don't think, you know, I think on average two to three years, they say most departments should really uh, roll over their fleet because yeah. of mileage and wear and tear. I don't think we're that fortunate. We do try to buy about four cars a year and uh, you know, try to do it that way. So we're in better shape than we have been in, in years past, but um, you know, certainly uh, every vehicle helps for us you know, yeah. with the wear and tear and the amount of calls that the officers are going to, for sure. And you got you, well, the license plate scanners. I mean, that you've had that for quite a while, but you've got, I understand you have some new ones. We do, we have three on vehicles now. And to be honest with you, they're a little finicky. Uh, and mm -hmm. I've talked to different police chiefs uh, in the surrounding towns, and they seem to have the same sort of uh, problems with uh, the technology part of yeah. it. I think there's some issues, wiring and, and things like that. But um, just recently we had a, a situation where an officer was able to uh, read a plate off of a vehicle that was stolen out of Haverhill, involved in a home invasion up in Haverhill. Mm -hmm. And we were able to find that vehicle and make an arrest and link those two individuals back to Haverhill. So certainly a great tool. We certainly utilize it as much as we can and uh, you know hope to uh, probably expand on that. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, <coughs> you, you're planning on putting, bring back the dog officer, right? For sure. Okay. I think, uh, yeah, in the evaluation of the department, I think we're lacking in a few areas, and uh, one of them was a canine. You know, it's a great tool uh, for a lot of reasons, uh, crowd control, missing persons, mm -hmm. and things like that. And then obviously if the dog is certified in narcotics or bomb detection or even gun detection, now you have another tool that you can use. Mm -hmm. We've relied on the, the Sheriff's Department, the Massachusetts State Police for their canines and surrounding towns when we've had uh, situations where we've needed a dog. And, uh, you know, I think it's about time that we bring it back. Yeah, and if you, yeah. you know, have to bring in the, the Sheriff's Department or somebody, it takes a little while. And yeah. It, you know, dogs, 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 they are late. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, to be honest with you, we, uh, I was fortunate enough to find a grant that fully funded the position. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's going to buy the dog, train the dog and the officer, uh, build a kennel at the, at the officer's home, and uh, reconfigure a cruiser. Um, you know, to, for the specs that the, that the dog needs. So yeah. really, it's a no-brainer for the city. It's uh, no cost. And I'm looking to build on that and add a second dog through a secondary grant. Again, sort of the same parameters, no cost to the city. So really, it's a no-brainer. It's a great tool, and, you know, we're definitely looking forward to it. Good. So, <clears throat> and in addition to that, uh, you, uh, what else are you looking for? I think the big, the big push that I've made, and I think that's been lacking in Lawrence over the years, and it's for a couple of reasons, maybe philosophical, but also, you know, manpower-wise, is really getting back to community policing. As you know, you're a big advocate of community policing. We've worked together uh, over the years in community policing. I think back when, you know, prior to 2010, before layoffs and things like that, which really decimated the police department. Uh, you know, I think we need to get closer to the community. I think that's really been lacking over the years. And when you do that, you build that trust with the community. They want to work with you. They want to help you take back their neighborhoods. They want to work on problem solving. And really, that can go a long way to really bringing Lawrence in, in another direction, in a better direction, in my opinion. Um, so for me, that's really been a, a focus of mine and trying to get that message out through social media. We're definitely trying to put out a lot more information so the uh, citizens really know what's going on. They can see the, uh, the work the officers are doing in what areas and really feel we want them to feel comfortable with the work that we're doing. And we know we're doing a lot of work, but we need to get the message out to let them know that we're doing a lot of work. And community policing is certainly going to be a big focus of mine going forward. Um, and I think we've started to take some steps in that direction. Yeah, community policing is, is very important because I know from past experience that a lot of people, not just not just the immigrants, all right, but the people who've been here for a hundred years, right. right, are afraid to talk to a police officer. Right. right? They, right. You know, it's some stranger <laughs> you're talking to. Yeah. And along that line, I know that uh, I was just talking to somebody just recently that. Uh, uh, they wanted they wanted to contact the police department, all right, and and you know identify some problems that they had, but they were afraid to do it. Right. Right. And you, there is a link on your website, I believe, where you go in and you can report a, a problem. Right. And nobody, not even the police department, knows who where it's coming from. Exactly. We have a couple programs. Actually, Text the Tip is one of them that you might be familiar yeah. with, where they can get go in there and tell us every piece of information that they want to give us and it's anonymous, totally anonymous and you know again we're looking to solve the problem not really so much looking to track down the person that yeah. sent us the information. Um, so we have that program, we have different uh, email addresses that you can call in for noise complaints, mm -hmm. drug activity, uh, certainly if there's a, an ongoing issue or something that's an emergency mm -hmm. in nature you want to use 911 but you know we have a bunch of um, uh, resources in there really where you can reach out to us in a number of ways to try to give us that information so we can help you, you know, work on the problem that's most important to you. Again, the problem in South Lawrence may be different than the problem in North Lawrence and neighborhood to neighborhood. You know, you have different issues as you know. It could be noise, it could be anything from littering to drug dealing to uh, speeding cars, you know, whatever the issue is. So we want to make sure we get all that information so we can assess uh, the next step that we need to do to try to problem solve that. Uh, and again, I think that goes back to putting a, a, an officer you know, on the beat in that neighborhood as much as humanly possible, the same one, so he can develop relationships. And, uh, you know, we've done that. I now have nine community policing officers um, assigned to different neighborhoods across the city. And again, we're trying to reach out to the counselors and the different uh, key players in those neighborhoods to try to establish that partnership, who to call, what email address, what phone number that they can call to, you know, work on that, on that problem. And uh, also, you know, from the business side of it, I assigned an officer, Abel Cano, to the business uh, owners. Mm -hmm. And again, his job is to go in, touch base with every owner, give him his card, his, his information, 
his contact information and sort of be that liaison between the business community and the police department. And again, they have a, a, a different set of problems that, that they have. Could be trespasses, could be alarm issues. And again, we want him to be that facilitator to really kind of uh, link the department to the businesses and hopefully bridge that gap. Yeah. Very good. And the links to all that is on your website, right? Absolutely. Again, I think uh, social media, certainly from the police department standpoint, has been lacking. And I think if you look on it now, I mean, I think we're more active than any police department around probably that I've seen. And again, I think that just goes to show that, you know, we want to get the message out. We want to see that, uh, we want the residents to see the work that's being done. And again, we want to use that so that they can come back and forth with us to, oh, we saw that, but can you do this? Really, again, just another way of, of trying to bridge the gap with people and, and really show them that, you know, we're trying to partner with them to try to work on problems. Yeah. You know, I, I heard you talking, or somewhere I heard that you were looking for your own air wing. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice, right? Yeah, yeah with, with the drones. Yeah, so I think, um, you know, again, it's another tool, and there's really no end that, that I'm going to look at to really to try to find tools that could help uh, bring the PD up to the 21st century, really, and also any tool that we can get to, to make Lawrence a better place. And yeah. I think, you know, drone technology is another another area that we could use, you know, so when we have big events, you'd like to be able to put that up in the air and, and just uh, another another eyes in the sky, if yeah. you will, and take a look at what's going on. Be a great tool for missing persons. You know, we've had some situations yeah. where we've had some, even some elderly uh, individual walk away, um, you know, with Alzheimer's and things like that. They're really, you know, a tool like the drone really could have been uh, eyes in the sky. And, mm -hmm. you know, we've had probably, I think we average up 500 missing persons a year, mm. uh, some more, um, more intricate than others, uh, but again, just another tool to really help us to try to help the community. And you're posting all those at missing persons now on the Facebook, right? Again, like, you know, we're 140 people, not 80,000 like we have in the city. Mm -hmm. So the more people that, are, you know, can link into our website and get that information and see that person may have information that we don't. Yeah. I'll tell you, social media has been great in terms of solving a lot of crimes from us and also finding missing persons. So again, that's why we think it's a big asset. And I certainly made a big push for that when I, when I first came on. Yeah, so what else you doing? You, you're doing all kinds of stuff. Right? You got the, all those video cameras. I think, we did we talk about those? Yeah, so the surveillance system, uh, or the monitoring system, mm -hmm. as I like to call it. Um, and again, I think uh, another tool, all the major cities have them, Boston, yeah. you know, and New York, and Cambridge, and Somerville, things like that. Uh, another tool, some people are gonna, you know, feel comfortable with the cameras, and hopefully, you know, deter them from doing crime. Um, but I think really, where we're gonna see our biggest gains for the cameras is in the investigative side of it. Yeah. When a crime has happened, really go back and find out the real story and, and figure out what's going on in that crime. I can tell you from personal experience in running the detective division that we've had great success using other people's cameras, business owners, residents, to really solve uh, crimes. And I think we solved three murders that I can think of off the top of my head, um, really using video, it was, yeah. it was key. You know, you don't always get people that wanna give you information uh, unfortunately, they're hesitant for one reason or another, but again, the video is another another key piece of information that we've certainly used, and with the camera system that we're going to employ, I think it'll be a huge asset for the city. Yeah, and they tried to rob the bank next door. You come in, you, you looked at our cameras. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> Fortunately, we, there was nothing on it. But Yeah, no, and, and again, I think, um, you know, that's just another example, like you said, your own yeah. personal experience with that. And, uh, you know, we've solved all kinds of crimes and we've located missing persons and, you know, uh, the whole gamut of really uh, crimes, mm -hmm. it's been a huge tool. And you also, I think, we're going to start the Citizens Police Academy again here. Yeah, again, uh, you know, going back to that whole community policing thing, we want to bring in as many people as possible like yourselves. And, uh, you know, I know you're very familiar with it, but, you know, I think we need to expand the amount of uh, community groups we have and really get more yeah. people to come to the community groups. The police academy is just another way of hopefully piquing the citizens' interest in what really goes on in police work. And I think it's, a, again, another valuable tool, again, to get another conversation started between police officers and citizens and, again, build up that trust, break down those barriers, and hopefully um, use that sort of partnership to help uh, move Lawrence forward. Yeah. So yeah, I, was, forward I was fortunate enough to attend the first Citizens yeah. of the Police Academy oh. in Lawrence. <laughs> well, there you go. Hopefully you had a positive experience and, uh, yeah. You know, we're gonna we're gonna try to build on that. It was sure. very good. It give you it gives you give you a very good understanding of you know yeah. of the police department and what they do and how they do it and yeah and how maybe you can even help. Oh, for but, sure. Yeah. And I, and, I, and I think sometimes people are, are are so caught up in TV 
You know, mm-hmm. they think it's really they have their ideas that it's done a certain way. Yeah. <laughs> but something like you know behind the scenes with a with a police officer and having a conversation and and being in the classroom for a while, you really get a good understanding of what the job is like. You know, the pros and cons and the difficulties really being a police officer in today's day and age. So I think it's a it's another valuable valuable tool. So what have, what have we forgotten here now? You got anything else that you'd like to talk about? We've- Talk about um, I, well, I think the big, you know, I think the big elephant in the room for the city is, uh, you know, the police station. As you know, you've been there many, many times. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think, uh, you know, I heard the stories that it was outdated when it was built back in the 1960s, and really we're struggling there with uh, trying to do the work we need to do there. We have a trailer on the side of it that we're actually probably going to have to replace because even that's now outdated and really in bad repair. So, you know, the vision moving forward would be to have a state-of-the-art facility, whether it's just a PD or an um, actual training facility. I know mm-hmm. there's been different talks back and forth. Either one is, is definitely needed. Yeah. You know, I would envision, you know, not only would it be a benefit for the police officers who deserve it, but also it'd be nice to have a state-of-the-art community room there where we could have community uh, meetings there and also the public could use it, mm-hmm. you know, for their own community meetings with or without the police department. But, again, a nice place that they could um, have pride in, that the police officers could have pride. And again, I think that goes a long way towards changing the image of the city and making the officers feel good about what they're trying to do on the street. Yeah. A motivated police officer, you know, goes a long way towards, you know, doing the right quality work. I was on the, I was on the study committee for the police station the last time they were talking about building. Yeah. And we toured a lot, of, a lot of local police stations around and there was a Tremendous difference between oh, yeah. those and what you see in large. Yeah, it pains me. I do the same thing. I go to trainings. At, yeah. you know, I've been to Hampton PD uh, for theirs, Tewksbury and Andover. And, you know, you walk in and you're like, wow, I'm, I'm glad for them. Yeah. But, you know, it uh, breaks my heart that, I, you know, that yeah. our police officers have to deal with what they're dealing with. Uh, there's been some great work done in that regard. I know Frank Moran, uh, Representative Moran, has been great in terms of uh, trying to get funding sources. Um, Barbara Italian, I mean, uh, obviously Mayor Rivera, they're all behind it. Yeah. Again, it all comes down to money, and hopefully the governor can help us out in that regard as well. And, um, you know, I know he has a great relationship with the, uh, with the mayor. So, you know, we'll see. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it'll become our turn and we can get that done. And we <laughs> definitely need it for sure. Anything else? Um, no, I would just say that, you know, again, you know, the, the police department really wants to work with the community. I think that really needs to be a big effort of ours. And I think we've done that. Um, I'd like to do more of that. We've increased the bike patrols, as you've, as you've seen, mm-hmm. um, the foot patrols on Broadway and, and other areas. We're, we're getting the community police officers to uh, walk in their areas, really. And I've walked myself as much as humanly possible, again, just to try to lead by example, but um, just try to engage the community a lot more. And again, we want the community to uh, engage with us. Yeah, and you got help the motorcycles us. out again. Yeah, right. yeah, the motorcycles are out there, the ATVs, the boat. I mean, you know. No tool is, uh, is going to go unused, <laughs> for sure. You know what I mean? And that's what you need in policing, you yeah. know? So, again, I would just encourage the, you know, the community and the, and the citizens out there, really, to, to get involved in the police department. Check out our website. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, really, to get that information so you know what's going on in, in the community and what's going on with your police department. And, uh, you know, we want to hear from you, for sure. We want to hear the good, the bad, the ugly. And, uh, you know, we want to work on it and make the, make the police department better because we think it's a, a big focal point for economic development in the city and, and moving the city forward. So I think that's key. So for me, that's really a, a, really a big part of, the, of the, uh, the push. Very good. Well, Chief, congratulations again. Thank you. You're welcome back anytime. Anytime you I appreciate have, that. have something new, and I'm sure it's going to be often, you can Absolutely. come back and we'll talk about it again. Well, I appreciate that. All we'll right. definitely come up with some... Uh, Definitely a lot of new things we want to try and get the message out to the citizens. So I appreciate you taking the time to have me in and, and let me get that message out there. No problem. We, we really, really like to do it, right? Thank and you. Anything we can do to help the police. Department.